Hello, and welcome to this lesson, on Component Props, in Svelte. In this video, we'll learn how to send data from a parent component, down to a child. Props, are custom attributes, that we can use to send data from one component, to another. Specifically, from a parent component, down to a child. Props are only used for parent-to-child communication. If we want to send data from a child up to a parent, we use component events. For this video, we'll use the root app component as the parent and create a child component called greeting. So, from the explorer, we create a folder and call it components. Inside it, we'll create a new file called greeting.svelte and just leave it empty for now. Then, in the root app component, we'll create the script section and import greeting from Components, greeting.svelte. In the markup, we'll create an instance of greeting as a self closing tag. To create a prop in Svelte, we follow a simple three step process. Step 1 We add a custom attribute on the component's instance in the parent. Step 2 We register the prop in the child component. And step 3 We use the registered prop in the child component. For our example, we'll add a prop called name, with a value of John. Then we'll press Shift, Alt, and Down arrow key, to duplicate the line down, and change the name to Jane. Then another one, with the name Jack. And a fourth one, with the name Jill. That's all we need to create the prop. To register the prop, we declare a variable in the child component, with the same name as the prop, and export it in the script block. Let's switch over to the greeting component. The prop we defined is called name. So, we'll create the script tags and export let name. That's all we need to register the prop. Now we can use the prop in the child component, the same way we use other variables, like binding it to the markup. As an example, let's bind the name prop to a greeting message in the child's markup. We'll create a heading with a greeting message and bind the name to it. If we save the file and switch over to the browser, we'll see that each heading has the names we defined as props. Svelte allows us to specify a default value for a prop in case the prop isn't defined on the component instance. To do that, we simply add a value to the exported variable definition in the child component. As an example, let's add a default value to the name prop in our greeting component. We'll have the default value as unknown. Then, we'll go over to the root app component and duplicate one of the instances down with shift, alt, and down arrow. But, we don't want the prop on this last instance, so let's remove it. If we save and head over to the browser, we can see the four greeting messages with names and the one at the end with unknown. So, Svelte used the default value when it saw there wasn't a name prop on that instance. So far, we've been hard coding our values in the props. Most of the time though, the values will come from some other source, like an input, database, or computation. In that case, all we need to do is bind the dynamic value to the props value with mustache syntax. For our example, we'll store the names in an array, then bind them to the component instance. So, let users equal array, then, John, Jane, Jack, and Jill. Then we'll change the instance value to bind to the array and use the array indexer to access the first value. We'll remove all the other instances and duplicate this one down three times. Then, we just change the indexer number in each of them to access the correct value. If we save and switch over to the browser, the greeting messages still show with the names. So, the props are using the values from the array. Because it's so common for prop names to be the same as variable names, the Svelte team has created a shorthand for it. If the names are the same, we can remove the attribute and just bind the variable. Svelte will understand that we want to use it as a prop name. To demonstrate, let's replace the user array with a constant called name, then set its value to John. Then we'll remove all the greeting instances except one. In that one, we'll replace the binding with the name constant. 
And, because the prop and variable names are now the same, we can use the shorthand and remove the prop attribute. If we save and take a look in the browser, we'll see the name in the message. So, the shorthand works as expected. Svelte allows us to use as many props on a component as we need. All we do is just add more props separated by a space. As an example, let's add another constant called surname with doe as its value. Then, we add it as a prop to the instance with the shorthand syntax. Then we'll switch over to the greeting component to register and use the prop. So, export, let, surname. And then we'll bind it to the heading after the name. If we save the file and head over to the browser, we see the surname from the second prop. When our dynamic prop values come from an external source, it will most likely be in an object. While it's perfectly valid to access object properties with dot notation, modern JavaScript makes it a lot easier. Svelte allows us to spread an object into a component instance and use the object keys as props. To demonstrate, let's remove our name and surname constants and define an object called user. Then we'll add the name and surname back in as key value pairs. Finally, we'll spread the user object into the component instance. Svelte will use the keys as the prop names so it'll still match the ones we registered in the greeting component. If we save and go to the browser, the heading still shows the name and surname. Our example only uses two props, so it may not seem very useful at the moment. But when you have 10 or more, it makes a big difference. All right, that concludes this lesson on component props in Svelte. In the next video, we'll learn how to avoid prop drilling and make data directly available to components. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again in the next one.